All right, welcome to Sign Law and Cosine Law. Uh, this is outcome T3, so let's get started. All right, so, uh, so far, all the trig we've done has only applied to right triangles. Isn't that strange? Like the world has more than just right triangles in it. Okay, so we need to develop additional rules for dealing with all other triangles. Okay, and so that's what the purpose of sine law and cosine law will be. So that we can work with any triangle that you ever give. Okay, now here's the statement of sine law. And we'll prove it later. So sine law says that the sine of angle A divided by side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by the length of side little b. And that's also equal to the length to the sine of angle C divided by the length of little c. Alternatively, I could flip that over. I could say little a over the sine of capital A equals little b over the sine of capital B equals C over the sine of C. Okay, and we should note something here. Side A is the name we give for the opposite of angle A. Side A is opposite angle A. So in this diagram, we have angle A, and side little a is the side on the opposite side. Similarly, we have capital B for this angle, and lowercase b for the other side, and capital C for this angle, and lowercase c for this side on the opposite of that. Now, you've seen Sokotoa before, sine is opposite over adjacent, yada yada, and again, that was only for right triangles. So you might ask yourself, how come sine law is true? That's a, that's a very important question, right? You can't just buy something that I tell you. You know, why is it true that this is always going to work for every triangle? Well, for that, you're going to have to wait till class. We're going to do that together as a group, okay? For now, I'm going to have to ask you to assume it's true until such time as you see the proof in class. So for now, let's do some examples. The first example here is find the measure of side A and B as well as angle C. So let's zoom in on this problem here. Okay, so we know uh, angle A, we know angle B, and we know little lowercase side C. That's the side opposite angle C. And we want to find the measure of everything else. Well, the first thing we can do is apply some old math that we've known for some time. And uh, that is that the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. So angle C, well, it's just 180 less 110 less 23.1. And so we end up discovering that angle C, ooh, this is going to be a little bit of mental math for me. Um, that's 70 minus 20 is 46.9 degrees. Okay, so that's angle C. Now, it's going to be a little bit more work to find, say, side A, given what we know. But it's going to be something that we can do using sine law. So we set up sine law. I'm looking for angle A, so I'll put that at the top. I know sine A, if I type that into my calculator. I know little c, and I know sine c. So filling in this equation, we now have A over sine 23.1 degrees equals 59.6 over sine 46.9. Now how do I get A by itself? Well, notice that below A I've got sine 23.1. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by sine 23.1, well, what happens? Well, I'll end up with 59.6 times sine 
23.1 over sine 46.9 on the right side. And on the left side, well, because I've multiplied by sine 23.1, it just goes away. Oh, great. Now it's simply a matter of typing into our calculator to find the value of A. Okay, I just typed all that into my calculator and I get A equals approximately 32 meters. Now, I'd like you to pause and try to type in this whole huge expression here into your calculator. Every calculator is going to be different and so you're going to need to just get a little practice and make sure you get to 32. If you do not get 32, well try to figure it out and see, see what's wrong. And if you can't figure that out, well come talk to me and uh, we will make sure that you can type this in correctly. Okay, finally though, we haven't solved everything. We need to find uh, side B. So I'll switch colors here. We'll call B this side in blue. I guess we'll have to shift over to give ourselves a little more space. Let's see now. How do I set this up? Well, I'm looking for side B, so I'll put side B at the top. B over sine of B, capital, equals C over sine C. Uh, B is unknown. Sine of B is the sine of 110. Little c is 59.6. And sine of c is the sine of uh, 46.9. Multiplying both sides of the equation by sine 110 and sine 110 isolates b because that cancels out on the left side. And so now I have b equals, well, all this mess, 59.6 times the sine of 110 divided by the sine of 46.9. I just typed all that into my calculator and I roughly got, after rounding, 76.7 meters. Okay, uh, again, try typing all that into your calculator and seeing if it gives you 76.7. If not, then it's just simply a, a typing issue that we need to deal with and come to talk to me right away about this problem and we can fix it right away. Okay, another example here. We're asked to find the angles D and E as well as side little d. Okay, I'll just note here to start this problem that we know angle F and we know side F. So that's the ratio I'm going to use. If I'm looking for angle E, and I know little e, well, we're kind of set. If I'm looking for big E, I'll write it on the top. Sine E over E. And that's why we write sine law in both, both ways, so that we can isolate the variable that we want. I want sine E, so I put sine E on the top. Okay, um, equals sine F over little f. Okay, so notice I'm also not using ABC. Even though sine law is stated as ABC at the top of the page, I can work with whatever sign, or uh, without whatever uh, side name you give me. Ah, whatever you call it, Q. That's fine. Call it H. That's fine. You know, it's just that the side name and the angle name must match each other. Okay, let's just plug it in. We get sine E, which is sine E unknown over side E 18 equals sine F, which is sine 45, over side F 14. Okay, uh, so therefore I've got sine E equals, well, let's see, how do I do this? I'll multiply by 18 on both sides. Mm-hmm, that cancels. And now as a result, I've got sine E equals whatever that mess is on the right. I'll type all that in, sine 45 times 18 divided by 14. In my calculator, it gives me something like this, 0 0.9091137, blah, blah, blah. The blah, blah, blah is important, don't lose it. How do I find angle E now? 
Well, you may recall that to find angle E, you're going to have to do the sine inverse of the sine ratio. That's the sine inverse of all that. 0 0.909 blah 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 which is sine of that and oh in my calculator I get 65.4 degrees after rounding that's my angle E 65.4 okay I'll leave it as an exercise now for you to try and come and show me your work to find angle D now that you know the other two angles, guess what? You're able to find angle D using a principle we used above. And once you know angle D, let me see if you can find side D. Okay, I'll leave that as an exercise for you to try. Okay, and here's a final example for us just to see a word problem. I'm going to set up the word problem, and I'm not going to go ahead and finish the problem. Let's just read it together and see if we can make a drawing of this situation. Here we go. Boats are anchored at positions J, K, and M on a lake. Boats J and K are 80 meters apart, and J and M are 110 meters apart. And angle K is 120 degrees. Okay, well, how can I draw these three points J, K, and M? Well, if I want to draw it to some kind of scale, maybe I'll start by putting K down, since I know that angle, if this is the boat K, the angle K is 120 degrees, so maybe something like that. Okay, the distance from J to K is 80 meters, so we'll call that 80 meters right there, and we'll put J on the, on the map. And J and M are 110 meters. So we'll draw a third side to get to M. And J and M are 110 meters apart. Okay. Now to solve the question, it's asking us what's angle J. It's asking us how far is it from K to M. Okay. And in order to find all of these different kinds of values, well, we're going to have to use sine law here. I'll just hint you in the right direction and let you finish this one. We actually can't find either of those values to start. But using sine law, we know angle K and side little k. We know side little m, and we could find angle m by setting up sine m over m equal sine k over lowercase k. Now setting that up and solving for angle m will then give us enough information to solve for angle j. And then once we know angle j, we'll have enough information to find side j. Okay, I'm going to let you finish that one and bring that one as well to class uh, where we're going to have time so we can work on the homework that's listed below. Thanks for listening.